Welcome to a stationary coating video. This is Vulcan cooling experiment number four. Now you see I have dropped the large heat exchanger and replaced it with evaporation chambers. So let's let take a quick look at the design. It's going to kick on once we hit below 140. So we have a large power vent as before. We have a purge valve, purge valve now tucked in more neatly. And the gases are dumped right from the power vent. That's so we can pick up that reasonably cool pollutants back into the system. We have the same amount of gas as we typically in the previous runs. We have the cooling factor. The temperature dropped below 140, so the vent kicked on. So we have three of the larger inline tanks. The gas comes in. We have three um, condensation valves. Interesting on the valve count. So with three, I do not get any damage on the cow. If I reduce it to two or one, I will get liquid damage in the cow. It doesn't hurt the performance of the, of the overall system that much, but it does result in the strange noise that you're taking damage on the cow. So with three, I don't notice any damage or any um, strange noise occurring. In the previous experience, I had the um, purge valve kind of stuck up in the air over here. I went ahead and tucked it in. So this pipe that was here, I removed that. There's plenty of cross connections and I stuck it right there, which worked out because this is where the cable comes up for the power vent. So it sort of sneaks in here. I have it set as 3,500 as before. Still have three inline or smaller inline liquid tanks insulated. I experimented with, you know, larger tanks and other things and it doesn't seem to affect it all that much. So I don't think it's really worth it at this point. Now the biggest change is use of the evaporation chambers versus using the uh, large heat exchanger. The heat exchanging built into these uh, chambers is extremely efficient and fast, amazingly so. If there's some way you can use this over a heat exchanger, you know, definitely go for it. All right, so what happens? The liquid is formed. If we have too much liquid, it goes out. That void, if this gets too, pressure goes up, it gets too hot. Liquid comes down here, it gets pulled in. This is the input for the evaporation chamber. And the output gas, I just dump it back in here. That seems to work fine. I tried removing this and just putting a cow on here just to dump it out in the atmosphere, and that was not as efficient. So this is pretty simple, just dropping the pipes on here and gets rid of that gas. The pressure is set to 3,500. I played around a little bit, dropping down like to 3,200. Uh, I think that'll give you a little bit colder gas over here, but um, at least for the first run, the first night run, it doesn't seem to help or hurt. I think there's enough gas in here that the system's struggling just to get this temperature down. So, you know, mucking with this a little bit doesn't really matter on at least the first night. All right, so I have two evaporation chambers. You see where I added it. Initially started with one, and two is definitely a bigger impact than one. I tried three and four, and three helps barely. I think four actually hurt the system. And I think two is a good number um, for that. And I said it's set and just turned on. And the uh, heat exchanger part of the evaporation chamber is connected to our supply of CO2. And as we see, it's uh, cooling down. It started at uh, 127 and 3,000 moles, reasonable amount of gas. And we're at 128. The uh, logic, the current logic now is uh, pretty simple. If it's uh, below 140, turn the fan on. If it's above 140, turn the fan off. That's all it does. It uses this sensor for the temperature outside and 
you literally could run this without a um, any logic. Just set it all up, turn the fan on, let it run all the time. It probably won't do as good with the logic, but it's pretty reasonable. And so, for example, if you're rushing to get something set up early game, you could set this up and then add the logic later. Just turn it on, let it cook, and then go back and put the logic in it to control it um, in a later cycle. And I did other experiments. I added, tried to add like you know a lot more volume to the tanks. Um, and there's a lot of complexity that can be added to the system. I think, and it just adds layer on there. I'll leave, leave that for future experiments. Even if you use just, you see we're already up to uh, 172 and still going. If you use one uh, evaporation chamber, I think even that configuration, which is pretty small, you're still more efficient than using the large heat exchanger. And in general, in this video, I want to sort of set a baseline, you know, keep increasing what the baseline efficiency is. So we'll let it keep on running. Now, as typical with this design, even though the fan has stopped, there is, here's 20 liters of liquid pollutants. We have 19. And look at the uh, latent energy, you know, or almost negative 10 kilojoules. Here we have 10 kilojoules. We're still cooling. And you see the temperature continues to drop. And I see it's still going down. You know, at 190 already. So I said it's definitely way outperforming the previous design. And these chambers, I don't, I don't think these chambers are all that expensive. They're, they don't require anything that um, exotic as file alloys. Um, could you make something just with active vents if you had like a whole bunch of active vents possibly? I'm not sure. It'd be, it'd be interesting to do an active vent design um, for something, you know, very early game and you don't need Invar then for it. All right, so flaws of this system, which could be addressed. So the current, one of the flaws in this system, once you run out of fluids, we lose the cooling ability. And what happens is that this will actually start to heat up. And so what happens is that it gets to like, say, two, hopefully 238 again. And then over the day before the next nice cycle, it might drop back, drop down to 228. You know, it loses a little bit. Not a lot, but a little bit. That could be addressed by when the temperature of the chamber exceeds the temperature of this, hopefully we can take this out pipe of the tank. Then we effectively will just have the code open this valve and dump the contents. So the, the logic would be use a chamber as much we can. Once it starts getting too hot during the day cycle, vent it. And that empties it out, and then it stops putting a negative impact on the uh, your cooling supply. The other thing is that once we know how no longer have liquids in this liquid pipe, there's no reason to keep this li this this gas here. So at this point, especially during a time frame, this is kicking up. Reprogram this valve to zero, and have it empty this this pipe out. So effectively, once it gets too hot open up the uh, chambers, dump them, set this to zero, empty this pipe out, and then effectively, and then of course, once it's empty, reset it back to its state, and that effectively restarts you to the beginning state that happened when I first started this video. So you basically, you're able to repeat the starting state. Now, when the system restarts, even if you emptied out, it starts a little warm and it takes a little bit to cool down. I'm not sure if the best scenario is putting a digital valve on here. And then once this gets colder than this tank, open the valve up and let it transfer is one solution to that. I'm not sure if digital valve will slow down the heat exchange between these components or not. The solution I'm using now, which is by default, see we're 235 already, is as it starts heating up initial startup, yes, this gas will, will go down a little bit, but this gas is also buffering and making this cool down faster than normally would be. 
So it's possible it's a wash. In other words, even though startup will add heat to the system, this helps cools the chambers down more quickly during startup. So it's possible that the net effect is, is near zero, which means you don't need the extra logic on there. So obviously you didn't have to probably do an experiment to see if it really makes a difference. And we're at 235, I think we're, yeah, we're, see it now slightly hotter. And so what I'm gonna do, we hit 235. So I'm gonna do a manual dump. I believe this can be done through code. And that brings it back down. So at this point, it's not gonna pull down the temperature. I can hit this lever. It's, it must be a bug because look, the convected and radiator are stuck at the last value, even though there's nothing in the um, chamber. Hopefully it's not applying that factor. And then uh, this should be stable at this point and not drop anymore. And just as I could set this zero and dump it back out. All right, so I want to show this new design. I said it's definitely a huge improvement. I mean, 235 compared to like, um, what? 140-ish before, or I think 160 -ish. So it's definitely a huge improvement. And the chamber is definitely, um, I think, now it uses up I think, a little more room. And of course, chambers require some power. Um, but definitely is a um, better design. I, I have done some experiments with trying to get rid of this, and I just can't get rid of this purge valve. Um, so that's really a necessity to, to do that. At this point, there may be some other design that doesn't require it, but for now it does. I think there's a lot more to do to make it way more, you know, make it a little bit more efficient, but each one of those iterations adds more and more and more stuff to it to the point that you may be better off replicating a simple system versus doing something complex. I've also done experiments where I'm able to get this tank down below 30 Celsius just using um, these, these chambers with other crap around it, but no additional stages per se. So effectively able to get, you know, from 127 down to under 30 Celsius. Now, as you get closer and closer, it becomes less and less efficient. So if you do it with a lot of gas, it's probably not gonna do as well as if you just add another stage. And that would be the other second part. This is like a first stage. If you add two more, a, a pair of chambers, and use this as the uh, heat sink for the uh, first condensation chamber. And then the output of the evaporation chamber would be, you know, should be sub-zero temperature at that point with pollutants. All right. And I'm not going to go over the code per se in this video, as it's um, pretty simple and it looks like, you know, other code, my other code patterns. I will put a link to it in the description. It doesn't do the fancy stuff of like opening. It just turns the fan on and off. And uh, I'll, I'm going to play around with um, having it do uh, more interesting things. That probably will be in um, experiment number five. But I definitely want to show you that because it's definitely a big improvement over what I've done before. And I think in some degrees easier. All right. Until next time. See ya.